Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to go about resolving a Windows 11 blue screen error you're having on your computer. So whether you're performing updates, you're getting an IRQR not less or equal message, K mode exception not handled, kernel data in page error, a lot of errors pertain to this problem. And we're going to go ahead and jump into what should hopefully be a pretty straightforward process, guys. And we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. So first thing I'd recommend doing would be to actually go ahead and boot to the troubleshooting utility on Windows 11. So if you do a hard power off three times in a row, Windows should automatically attempt to launch the starter prepare utility. And if it doesn't find anything, it will give you the option to select advanced settings, in which case it would take you to a screen that looks like this. Now, if it does not take you to a screen that looks like this or you're unable to get to that, you can also download the Windows 10 media creation utility or Windows 11. They probably will make a creation utility for Windows 11 at some point. And it doesn't really matter. You can actually run the Windows 10 utility on Windows 11 as far as I'm aware. And you should be able to run the troubleshooting utilities built in within it. So you just would go ahead and download it to an ISO file and then burn it to a DVD or USB. It'd have to be about 4 gigabytes or more. It couldn't be a small USB flash drive and it couldn't be a CD. It'd have to be a DVD. And then you'd boot your computer from it. So depending on the computer manufacturer, you'd have to tap a different key on your keyboard in order to launch that menu in order to select what boot drive you want to go off of. So it could be anything between the escape key, F2, F8, F12, for example. And those are the function keys on the top of your keyboard. So you may have to just do a little bit of trial and error. Shouldn't take you more than a couple minutes. Googling it would probably be best before you even begin. But anyway, we're ready to go ahead and jump right into it. So we're on the choose an option page. So these will look very similar whether you're booting from it directly within Windows itself or if you're plugged in a USB flash drive with the media creation utility installed and you selected the recovery option. So when you are setting up your Windows 11 installation or Windows 10, depending on the drive you're using, there should be an option to repair your computer in the bottom left corner of the dialog window, one of the first screens that comes up. You go ahead and select that and then it would take you to a troubleshooting screen like you see here. And you want to go ahead and select troubleshoot, reset your PC or see advanced options. And then there are going to be a whole bunch of options in here that we're going to explore in today's video. The first one we're going to actually go underneath advanced options. And then select start or prepare. Fix problems that keep windows from loading. So go ahead and select that first. Okay, so you can see it could not repair our PC. That was our first option we could try. Something else, if we go back into Advanced Options here, and then select Troubleshoot. We're going to go underneath Advanced Options again. You can go ahead and actually access Safe Mode by selecting Startup Settings. And then if you select the Restart button, you have the option on the screen, select Safe Mode with Networking, which will give you a key on the screen. It'll tell you which key to press to enter that. I believe it's the F7 key. It'll do that for you. I'm not going to go over that in today's tutorial because I'm, I don't really want to go into safe mode, but you're more than welcome to attempt that by going into here and then selecting restart. Again, it'll launch another screen. It'll say what key do you want to press and it'll give you like seven or eight different options and you want to select safe mode with networking. There's also an option for a command prompt too, but that's going to be something we're going to cover later in this video and we don't even have to go through that in order to access it. So that's why I'm not going to really push for that, because unless you know ex exactly what's causing the problem, you probably don't need to go into safe mode. Unless you're trying to recover files, in which case then you definitely can go into safe mode, but we're trying to actually recover our computer here. So I hope that makes sense. Um, something else we can also try here as well would be to uninstall updates, remove recently installed quality or feature updates from Windows. So if you go ahead and select that, you can uninstall the latest quality updates, which generally is the more day-to-day -day updates. Feature updates are the less regularly released ones, like the big ones. I would equate it to service packs in like Windows 7 and Windows Vista and Windows XP. So larger updates that occur once or twice a year at most. And the quality updates are more just a regular update. So 
probably obviously depend. It'll take longer if you're going to try and uninstall the latest feature update versus quality update. And maybe you don't need to go back that far. So just giving you guys a couple of pointers with that. Something else you can also look at here, and we're going to jump into the command prompt in a little bit, but you can select System Restore, which will use a restore point recorded on your PC to restore Windows. And this is something I would highly recommend here, guys. So select Next. Assuming you have a restore point saved on your computer, you go ahead and select the most recently created one, and you'll select next, and then you'll select the drive. It shouldn't, you shouldn't actually have to select the drive. You can scan for affected programs, but we're going to keep it all default here, and then we're going to select finish. So once started, system restore cannot be interrupted. Do you want to continue? I think we're going to select yes. I don't think we have anything better to do on our computer right now. So just give it a moment here to initialize. It will take a couple minutes to run, obviously depending on how large your hard drive is and how much is saved on the system restore point. So just give it a couple minutes here.
Okay, so you can see System Restore completed successfully. The system has been restored. Your documents have not been affected. Click the Restart button to restart your computer. Go ahead and select Restart. Okay, so you can see the system has been restored successfully. We're going to go over a couple different methods in addition to that if that did not work. So I'm just going to pause the video and we're going to start back up back on the recovery screen that we started with. Okay, so a couple other things we can try here too. If you go back into Troubleshoot, you can select Reset Your PC while you choose to keep or remove your personal files and then reinstall Windows. You can select to Keep My Files, which will remove apps and settings, but keeps your personal files. You can also select Remove Everything which will remove all of your personal files, apps, and settings. So this is more of a factory reset, the second option here. First option, it should not delete all of your personal files. However, it will pretty much clear most of your programs. And keep in mind, you know, there's no guarantee that your information, number one, is even still available and easily recoverable on your computer to the point that you actually would be able to recover anything. And the second point is that there's always a chance that it won't actually recover and it will just do a factory reset anyway. So I, there's no guarantee that I actually would keep your files anyway. So I would recommend trying to get a recovery tool and backing that up first before selecting it anyway. But again, those are a couple of different options. And then something else you can try here if you go back to the choose an option. Another option, if you go underneath choose an option and select troubleshoot, advanced options, and now select where it says command prompt. Okay, so the first thing we should do is type our main hard drive here. In most cases, it should be the C drive. So you just do a C colon, and then hit enter on your keyboard. So once you're underneath the C drive, we're going to type in DIR, and then hit enter on your keyboard. It should have program files, users, and windows all in there. That's how you know you're in the right directory. In some cases, it might be the D drive as well, so just keep that in mind. Next thing we're going to do is type in CD space forward slash Windows forward slash System32 forward slash Config. And then you're going to hit Enter on your keyboard. So now you're going to type MD space backup. If you've seen other tutorials, it might also say to put down MD backup. Um, that's because the backup name is pretty common when you want to back something up. So you can name this whatever you want. It doesn't have to be backup. So if you've already made a backup folder in the past, you could do backup one, for example. So once you're done setting the name you want the backup to be called, hit enter on your keyboard again. At this point, you want to type copy, C-O-P-Y, space. Then you want to do the star symbol above the E key. Then do a period or a dot, whatever you want to call it. Then another star sign. And then another space. And then type backup. And then hit enter on your keyboard. Now you want to type CD reg back reg back and then hit enter on your keyboard so now that we are under the reg back so now you want to type dir again and then hit enter so now at this point we're going to type copy again so copy space star sign 
dot, another star sign, space, and then two dots. So we're going to type copy, space, star sign, dot, sign, star sign, dot, dot, and then hit enter on your keyboard again. So for overwrite, you want to overwrite all. So type A on your keyboard, so capital A, and then hit enter on your keyboard. So at this point, you should be good to go. You can close out of the command prompt window. And if you accidentally continue to Windows 10, you should be all set. So I hope one of these three or four different methods we went through in this tutorial helped you guys out. Again, I'm not sure if you guys heard me earlier, but try to go back into your safe mode if possible and uninstall any programs you know might be conflicting with the Windows startup if you can get into safe mode. So just keep that in mind, something very simple like that could be blocking up everything. So again, I hope this tutorial helped you guys out and I will catch you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.